Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you happen to find yourself in a rut with your photography, concerned that your rate of improvement isn't as fast as you'd like, one of the very best things you can do is examine how you used to do things when you were a beginner, just getting started versus where you're at today. It's pretty easy to forget where we began when all you see is where you're currently at, but a quick evaluation of this can be a real eye-opener. And in this video, I've selected one of my favorite images from when I first started to re-edit today and compare the differences to see where my own photo editing skills are at now compared to where they were when I started in order just to, to see how far I've actually come. And at the conclusion of this video, I'd highly encourage you to do, to do the same exercise as it's an incredible tool for determining how much you've actually progressed. So I broke this video down into three simple parts with the first part dedicated to quickly reviewing the mistakes I now see in my original edit the second part is all about applying local adjustments to the new edit using filters and masks. And the third part will be focused on finishing the, the image with global adjustments and then comparing the results. So here is the image right here. And don't judge, this was a, a long, long time ago. This is probably, well, I guess I've been in the outdoor photography for nine years, so this is probably about eight years ago. This is my, my in-law, a tree on my in-law's farm in Illinois. And uh, just a quick review of this. One of the very first things that really jumps out at me is this uh, really strong magenta color cast. So I definitely want to correct the white balance. This looks far, far too red to me. And of course, it is definitely too sharp. It looks like I added a, a ton of clarity, quite a bit of texture, probably a little bit of sharpening as well. It's kind of a very common beginner thing to, to overly sharpen photographs. And I definitely did it in this particular scenario right here. It also looks extremely contrasty as well. These, uh, these black tones are, are, are much too uh, deep of a black for me and the uh, the shadows are, are too blocked up as well you really can't see any detail in this area right through here and I think a lot of that is just caused from just adding too much contrast to the scene in the sky actually looks too too just uh, overly detailed a little bit like if I come up here to the develop module just to see exactly what I have done here um, you can see that you know kind of a, a classic beginner move that I used to do all the time is bring the the highlights down to to negative 100 and crank the shadows up to plus 100 and you can even see the contrast as well as all the way up to, to plus 100 tons of texture tons of eh, not too much texture and clarity but uh, it definitely looks overdone especially all through this area right through here so as you can tell there is a lot of work that needs to be done to this photograph but I remember when I when I when I first edited the image I absolutely loved it it was such an, an explosive uh, sunset and I was really really proud of the of the way it looked but uh, now upon reviewing it I'm not too excited about it but here is the raw file right here so you can see that I definitely underexposed this photograph trying to get as much detail or as much color in the sky as I possibly could so in order to to do kind of an apples to apples comparison let's come back up here and let's just add the same crop to this image right here so I'm just gonna hit sync settings crop leave that checked hit synchronize just so the crop is absolutely identical. So one of the very first things that I want to do in this section here, the first section, we're just going to apply only the local adjustments. We're not going to do any kind of global adjustments. So we're going to use filters and masks in order to do this. And the first thing I want to do is I want to bring, just kind of balance out the exposure a little bit. We have a very bright sky behind a almost silhouetted tree trunk or, or tree and all the foreground is very dark as well. So I want to kind of balance that out a little bit. I think that's going to be the, the best starting point. So I'm gonna come up here to the develop module. I'm gonna hit the mask section right here. And let's go ahead and let's just try AI Sky and see how this does here. It did a pretty good job, but I don't think it really um, masked out all of these branches right through here very well. So I'm gonna delete this mask. And it's gonna be pretty difficult for a mask to do a good job on this tree trunk or on this tree itself because there's so many little branches here. So let's just do AI background. And that did an okay job, but once again, you can see where it really missed all through here. So that actually didn't do a very good job. Uh, AI subject? AI yeah, subject, it did, it did pick the tree. It did accurately determine what the subject was, but it missed everything on this side here. So in this scenario, you know, you know what, do you, what do you really do? And something that, um, I, I don't do this too often, but it's extremely effective. I'll show you real quick. So what you do is we're just gonna minimize this here, and I'm going to come over here to Linear Gradient. 
And I'm basically gonna draw just a massive gradient all the way across my scene. The ultimate goal here is just make sure that that gradient is across the entire photograph. I don't want it fading from the top to the bottom. I want it to be 100% gradient all the way through the scene. And as you can see right here, that is exactly what has happened. So now that that is in place, I'm gonna come up here to these three little dots, drop this down, and I wanna hit intersect mask with a luminance range. And since I'm, I wanna target these darker tones through here, I'm gonna drag the range slider from the right to the left. So I'm just gonna start to bring this over until the only the, the tree trunk and all the branches and the foreground is in red. So maybe about right there, maybe we'll soften up that fall off just a little bit. Bring it to about right there, I think looks pretty good. And now that that is in place, now once I go ahead and let's boost up the exposure a little bit just so you can see the difference, and you can see that that did a much better job. You can see the ground is very targeted. All of those little branches are targeted right through there. So I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit to about right here maybe. Let's bring these shadows up quite a bit like that. I'll probably come back and refine this just a little bit. But that's a quick tip that when when the, the Lightroom AI masking tools, Sky AI, um, background AI, subject AI, when those things don't work, you can kind of go through that little technique right there and that will usually do a, a much better job when the AI tools are struggling. So now that the overall image is much more balanced, what I'm gonna do here, let's just double click this and let's just name this tree and background. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna hit these three little dots here, I'm gonna hit duplicate and invert mask because what I wanna do now is now I wanna target the sky. So I'm just basically copying the first mask and just flipping it around. And as you can see, did a pretty good job right through there. And what I want to do is I'm gonna bring down the exposure here just a little bit to maybe about there. Let's bring down the highlights a fair amount. Let's maybe warm it up just a little bit as well. Something to maybe there, maybe even add a little bit of magenta. There is a lot of warm tones in that this area right through here and magenta tones. I think that's starting to look good. Maybe bring down the highlights a touch as well, just a little bit more. And I think that that looks pretty good. Let's toggle this on and off, yeah. Pretty good, it did target the ground a little bit, but that's okay, the majority of it is the sky and I think that looks good. And then here is the tree. Let's rename this as well to the sky. And let's toggle this on and off. So this is where we started and this is where we're at right now. So two masks did a pretty pretty substantial change in a relatively short amount of time. Now this area right through here, this little white stripe here, that definitely bugs me. So I'm gonna come over here to the uh, little Band-Aid icon. I'm gonna leave this on Content Aware Remove. By the way, I'm using the, the brand new Lightroom update that came out a, a week or so ago, just, uh, just so you know. And uh, I, th I find that this Content Aware actually works pretty good. And I'm just gonna draw just a stripe kind of right through here. Let it analyze it and it'll pick up that area. And I think that that did a pretty good job right there. So next thing I wanna do is I really wanna bring out some of this kind of this area right through here because the ground is kind of undulating. It was a little bit of a, it wasn't perfectly flat. It was a little higher areas versus lower areas. So I wanna add a little bit of dodging and burning with radial filters. So let's make this a little bit bigger on my screen here. Come back up here to the masks, create new mask. Well, let's do a linear gradient. We're gonna drag it right through this corner here. And let's reduce the exposure to about there. I think it looks good. Do another mask. This time let's do a radial gradient. And I wanna drag this one kind of like this to about right here, put this in the corner, off to the side, kind of pull it in to about here. Let me turn it just a little bit more. And I want to reduce the exposure there a little bit. I think I'm even gonna pump up a little bit of clarity here as well because there's some nice detail in that foreground area. And I'd like to add additional clarity or sharpening to areas that are in the foreground and not areas that are in the midground or background because I think that that creates a little bit of a, a, an additional illusion of depth when things that are closest to the viewer's eye are sharper than areas in the background. So let me come back up here to this linear gradient here in this bottom corner, and let's add a little bit of clarity to that region as well. I'm gonna come back to create new mask, and I'm gonna do one more radial gradient, and I wanna do it right through this little area here because you can see that there's a little bit of light hitting this area in the center, and I kinda want to exaggerate that just a little bit to about maybe there, maybe we can warm it up just a little bit. And now you can see that we darken this area, we brighten this area, we darken this area a little bit. And when we toggle everything on and off now, you can see that 
that area in the foreground, all of that grass now has a little bit, it shows more of that undulation, I kind of like that rolling hill aspect to it just by darkening down the shadows a little bit and brightening the areas of highlights just a touch. Now the next thing I think I'm going to do is I want to make sure that this swing doesn't get lost, the seat of the swing. That's really, really important to me. So I, I want to brighten that up. So I'm going to come up here to create new mask. Let's do this with the, the brush and I'm going to leave it on auto mask and I'm just going to paint right across this seat of the swing. And the auto mask feature does a really good job in this scenario. Right through there looks pretty good. And let's just bring up the whites here. You can see how much of a difference that is. Bring that up to nothing crazy, just about right there. But I think that now that that swing, you're definitely not gonna miss the swing. You can easily see that here. Let me just hit fit or fill so you can easily see that. Yeah, and I think that looks good. Maybe even bring it up just a little bit more to about right there. And the last thing I wanna do is I just wanna brighten up this area right through here, the tree trunk, because you can tell that that is where the sunlight is kind of naturally hitting that side. And if you leave one side of the tree trunk in shadow a little bit and the other side a little bit brighter, it might create that kind of three-dimensional look or three-dimensional effect. So I'm gonna come up here to create mask one more time and let's hit uh, radial gradient. Let's just draw just real quick. Just a radius kind of right through here, put it on an angle some, bring it down to here a little bit, widen it out. And I'm thinking something to here I think is looking pretty good. And let's just bring up this exposure just ever so slightly to about right there. And I'm gonna add one more radial gradient to this area right through here as well just to the side here where that light is hitting it, just to kind of bring that out just a touch, nothing crazy. But I think that that is starting to look pretty good. And, and once again, these are all masks here. There was no global adjustments done at this point. So I'm gonna to toggle all the masks on, we'll toggle them back off just to see where, we, where we're at now. So this is where, this is the raw file straight out of camera. And then this is where we're at right now. Once again, raw straight out of camera. And after a multitude of different masks, this is where we're at now. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna close all this down, and here is all the global section. So now in this part, I'm only gonna do global adjustment, just a little bit of finishing touches just to kind of polish everything off. And then the final part, we'll go ahead and compare everything. So what I'm going to do here is, let's see, I think that I want to, I kind of like the overall exposure of the scene. I definitely want to uh, warm it up just a little bit. I think something about Maybe right here looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna bring this tint down a touch to maybe there to negative 30. I think that looks pretty good. Let's uh, bring the highlights down just a little bit more, nothing crazy. And then let's pop the whites up a little bit. And I'm just kind of looking at the histogram up there and see how it moves over. That would definitely be too much of uh, an adjustment on the whites. I'm just gonna bring it back some here to maybe about right here. And then the black slider, I think I'm gonna bring that down just a touch, just to kind of bring those blacks more over towards the left side of the histogram. You can see how that moves. So nothing insane here. Thinking maybe around right about there, starting to, to look pretty good. Let's uh, add a little bit of positive texture. Let's reduce the clarity just a touch, just to kind of soften down some of those larger size details. And then the texture is going to bump up the the, or enhance the smaller details in the scene. I always kind of like to negative clarity with a little bit of positive texture. That's kind of like my go-to recipe there. And then let's kind of pop the dehaze just a little bit to maybe plus 10. That's also gonna add a little bit of, uh, of contrast to the overall scene. Let's go down to tone curve, sticking with contrast. And if you've never used any of these predefined uh, uh, tone curves that are kind of set up for you. You have a medium contrast and you also have a strong contrast. You can use those if you're not super comfortable using the actual tone curve, um, uh, putting in your own custom tone curve. I think that that looks pretty good, but it looks a little bit too contrasty now. So I'm gonna kind of come up here to global contrast and just kind of bring that down to about maybe right there. I think it's starting to look okay. I'm gonna bring those shadows up just a little bit more now. Something I think about right there is looking pretty good. And then last thing, I don't think I'm gonna do much in the calibration section. Actually, I'm gonna bring the green primary down just a little bit the hue to about right there, just to kind of add a little bit more yellowish into the green of the grass just a touch. Now I'm gonna come up here to the HSL section. I'm gonna to go to luminance. I'm gonna grab this little color picker here 
and just drag it over to this area. And as you can see, as I move it back and forth, that Lightroom has determined that there is green and yellow in that area. And I just wanna bring the luminance up through there, just kind of uh, dodging with color a little bit, just brightening those uh, yellow and green colors just a touch. And I think that that looks pretty good right there. And I think that that's uh, for just a real quick edit. I'm not sure how long that took, maybe less than 10 minutes. I'm pretty curious because I haven't compared it to see where the uh, the original edit was, but it should be, um, hopefully it'll be much, much better than the first one. So I'm gonna come up here to library. Let's go over here Whoa. and uh, select both of these. I can already tell it looks much, much better. Let's hit end survey mo mode and turn the lights out. And you can definitely see a huge, huge difference. I mean, this image to me on the right, looks much more smoother it looks much more polished not near as crunchy a much better white balance i still see a couple little issues through here on the white balance but overall it is a substantially better edit i like the the swing i like the the dodging and burning right through here and uh, actually i feel pretty good that <laughs> my my photo editing has come a, a long way in a um, in, in the last uh, you know nine years since i've been into outdoor photography is the image on the right um, perfect as of yet? No, and it, it's not my favorite image. I really wouldn't dedicate a ton of time to this, but in a real quick 10 minute edit, I can see a, a remarkable difference from where it was when I first started. So if you've never gone through that exercise, I would highly encourage that because like I mentioned to kick the video off, we only see where we're currently at and it's really, really easy to forget where we began. So I would highly recommend everybody to go through an, an a, a exercise similar to this it's a real eye opener and it'll make you feel a lot better with uh, where your progression is at with your photography. Now, before I do wrap up this week's video, I just wanna say a huge thanks to the longtime sponsor of the channel and this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog post and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I really do hope you enjoyed this week's video. I hope you got a little homework assignment, if you will, something that's kind of fun that you could play with just to, to see where you're at with your own photo editing skills. And you can also do this, it doesn't have to be with just photo editing. You can just, and I do this actually pretty often with Instagram. I think Instagram is a, a great tool for this. Just go to your Instagram account, scroll all the way down to the bottom of your grid and start to look through you know, those bottom few rows of your photographs just to see how they look, the composition, the coloring, the edit, everything about them. And then swipe all the way up to the top of your grid and look at some of your most recent work. That's another great way that you can see exactly how far you have progressed in your photography. And, and that only takes just a, a couple minutes to do. And it's a lot of fun. I think it's important to kind of give ourselves the old you know, pat on the back to see where we're at today versus where we started. So I, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. And if you did, if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. If you enjoyed it a lot, possibly share the video with uh, your friends or your family or your local photo club, I definitely would appreciate it. And any questions that you have, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And as always, I really do appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me today. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.